Hello world, welcome back to My Repair Project where we bring new life in the old things. Hope we're having a fantastic day today. Today we're, we're gonna be working on this cool old coffee table that I believe holds records. And so I'm gonna be getting it taken care of today. Um, I put it up free on Facebook Marketplace quite a while ago and it needs some repairs. It's been uh, crappily painted and all that kind of stuff which you'll see here in a little bit. Okay, so this is what we're looking at today. As you can see, it's seen better days. Someone has thrown some sort of paint on here. We got some cracks here. Hopefully we're gonna fill those in, we'll see. It does turn, which is pretty cool, but you can hear it dragging. I don't know if you can hear that. And it's not super on there, so I would hopefully try to improved that but what I what really drew me to this was the way it looked so it's a cut, cool low easy um lazy susan type coffee table and what I believe is that you can put records right here maybe, maybe not I might, maybe I gotta grab some records and see but anyway it will still be a cool little shelf to put stuff maybe some plants a little tchotchke get this thing taken apart I got my Saw horses right there. So you can see here, this is where it spins. Pretty simple device. Hopefully it's just that this is a little warped or I can shim it up a little bit to give it, as you can see, it just drags right there. You can see the wetness marks right there. So I wanna improve that just to make it a little bit better for the next person who, who gets this. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna take everything apart and we're gonna give everything a nice clean once over and we'll be changing the color on this just because um Okay, so this is what we got working with right now. The paint stripper is doing its job. Look at that. as well and I've mostly sanded things so I'm actually just trying different levels of how much to put on it feels like more more is more with this paint stripper So it looks like I did not use enough paint stripper on this big boy.
welcome back. It's another day. We had the weekend. It's just a beautiful day out here in Portland, Oregon. About 70 degrees. This is my hemlock. I have my yard. We call them hemi. Really good trees. Really happy this year. As you can see from all this new growth. Um, last year you got pretty cooked from all the heat that we got. But anyways, it's a new day. So what we're doing today is we're going to be uh, continuing working on this coffee table here. If I can, whoa. We're gonna be working on this coffee table here today. So uh, the, I let everything dry out over the weekend. It was 4th of July weekend, so I took a little break. As you can see, the there's quite a bit of still paint on and uh, old varnish stain whatever finish old finish I got, some, I got most of it off um and so what i'm going to be doing today is making some sawdust uh, i'm going to be starting with some 150 grit sandpaper then going probably to 220 and then seeing how everything's feeling clean everything up get everything really nice this is our first tough break for this project and yeah, there's always one or two right so i was walking taking a break and i had flipped over the bottom piece uh you can see this wonderful paint job continues i really don't know what was going on here um but if you step back oh uh, yeah you can see it on camera you know that's not flat not at all actually she's a little a little cockeyed Finally to it. These are my tests of classic gray and pickled oak on this piece that no one's gonna see. This is not really what I'm trying to go for. This gray is too gray. This is too light. So, well, I'm not feeling it. It's not really what, I'm, what the vibe is. Especially after I finished sanded both the top and the bottom. As you can see, this is more weathered as well so it's fit only fitting that we're going with weathered oak for our stain today
Well, would you look at this? This is just beautiful. Aged oak for sure. Just beautiful. In the last time lapse you saw, I put the final coat, poly coat, on the top of both the uh, top and bottom of this top coffee table. As you can see, the bottom hasn't been done yet. I'm going to catch that up later. Next, I'm moving on to the extensions for these guys. So what I'm working with is this oak here. I have actually decided to paint these a nice green because of the way that this turned out. And I'm also going to paint the foots here green as well to tie that all together. So I don't need to have some oak because these are going to be painted again. So I have some scrap pine that I have here. And as you can see, I'm starting to work on getting everything uh, etched out so that I can add some extensions for these so I can put the records underneath it. So we're going to get up another time lapse going and show you how I do that. So, all of these are done. They all fit for the most part. Uh, not, I would say I'm pretty proud of myself for doing this for being my first time. They all fit. Uh, they don't, you know, I'm not a furniture maker. I'm a, rest, I'm a store, so, you know, actually that one fits pretty good. Some of them, some of the gaps are better than others. But we're going to uh, be okay with that because we're painting it, so we don't really care uh, too much about grain quality or anything like that. That's why we're using pine anyway, rather than oak. All right, look at here. I have a nice coat of polyurethane on our nearly finished project. When I laid this down, I really fought with drying times. It was drying way too fast, and I was fighting bubbles and uneven coats and things like that. And so I did some Googling and I found that if you use a white or black uh, Scotch-Brite with your orbital sander and buff it out, it does take down some of those bubbles and uneven dryness so that um, you're not just having to strip and do everything over again. So that's what I'm doing here. I tested already on one other one. So I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride on the money piece, which is the top. And I'll show you how this works. So what you're going to use is a white scotch brite and a black scotch brite. Uh, black scotch brite is your quad 
your very fine quad steel wool type fit or grind abrasion. It's super fine. And this is your non abrasive pad. So we're going to start with this to take off some of the bumps and unevenness in the, in the coat. And then we're going to use this to buff it and kind of make everything nice and smooth. I'm going to start with a uh, on one on my DeWalt and very little pressure. Okay, I got an update for y'all. So this is how it looks assembled. Doesn't it look just amazing? Got the extension the extension pieces here, nicely blended in, everything's painted. There's a problem though. When you spin this, it makes that noise, which I'll show you in a second, but it's not very sturdy. I don't know about you, but that's not a very good coffee table. So I think we're gonna have to switch gears here. I did add these little rollers, little dollar jobs from Harbor Freight to try to create a little bit of stability in it, but looks like it's just not gonna work out. I got a little spacer in there as well. So what we're gonna do is we're going to change gears here and make this into a non-moving Table. I know it's a bummer. I was really hoping that this would be a uh, like a lazy lazy Susan style, but um, I have a lot of time to this, and I honestly just want to move on to new projects. And I think that by making it stationary, that it's not really going to ruin it too much, and that's still going to be a lovely piece for someone. Mm -hmm. 